Everybody is Big Anklevich coming at you, not quite live, with another ankle cast. Um, so I'm still using my phone. Uh, <laughs> I think I said at the end of the last show that I was going to immediately order my new camera, but of course I'm lazy and slovenly and uh, kind of grotesque, really. Um, I'm not sure how all of those have anything to do with not getting the phone but I, the, the phone, the camera, but I do know that the lazy part did, and I didn't order it, and therefore I'm still using uh, my phone. So, yeah. <laughs> Once again, this is my second try at it. I thought I had a way around the whole uh, problem with the um, heat causing the phone to freak out and shut down. I got a white towel, I even have it right here. I got this towel and I covered the, uh, the camera up with it. You can see right here in the video, here's me putting the towel over the camera, thinking, oh, I totally got it. I'm, this is gonna work. It's gonna keep it out of the direct sunlight so it won't get too hot. And that didn't matter. Um, it totally died on me. The, the ironic part is, it died right after I said this. Here, check out this little clip, and then you can see uh, when it dies. I told you about last time how the video got, or the cell phone got hot and stopped working on me and deleted the file that I'd made the first time I tried to make the podcast as it was sitting up on my dashboard in direct sunlight. So this time around, uh, since I still haven't got the new camera, I just put the cell phone on the dashboard and then I covered it with a little towel to get the direct sun off of it. Hopefully that worked. Uh, hopefully I'm not redoing this again tonight on the way home. But, um, uh, So yeah, maybe I asked for it by saying those words. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, uh, it didn't work out. Uh, on top of that, I totally forgot to hit record on my audio recording device. So, all in all, it was just a disaster. It was an overall disaster. And I sucked! It's like, it's like I started podcasting today instead of 10, 10 freaking years ago. But, um, anyway, here we are with the ankle cast that's actually working. Um, so, uh, my writing update for this week is that I'm having issues. I have to admit, I'm, I'm having trouble. Um, I'm, I'm working on Sunny and Gray, which uh, is, I don't know what it is about where I'm at right now. I'm just like in a, in a scene that isn't exciting to me. And I'm having a hard time motivating myself to write on it. Uh, I guess that counts as writer's block. It's not like I sit down to the computer and just stare off into space or anything like that. But, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm uninspired. The muse is not coming to me. You know, I think what I really need to do is just put my head down and plow through it. You know, just write until I get through that scene and then I can move on to the later stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, that's where I'm at now. I was thinking uh, that I probably should get somebody who is interested, anybody who listens to the show, if you're interested in a free copy of the first book in the Sunny and Gray series, uh, it's not really a copy of a book, it's just going to be a file that you can read, but uh, I'd really like find somebody who could be a first reader for me um, that can read this thing through and see if there's any typos and uh, possibly tell me you know if they're getting bored in this spot or uh, m 
more so if there's, uh, you know, inconsistencies in the story. Like I say one thing at one point and then uh, say a different thing later on. Stuff like that. Um, that would be good. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, send me an, uh, an email to editor at the Doonste- or sorry, editor at doonsteef.com and uh, I'll see what we can do, see if I can send that out to you and you can check it out. It's a full book. It's like uh, 80,000 words long or so. So, you know, it's an actual commitment. So keep that in mind. But I assume if you guys listen to our show that you're probably readers. So it's like something that you want to do. So, you know, if that's what you're, if you're interested in that, let me know and, and I'll, uh, I'll send it your way. But there will be responsibilities that comes with it. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to send me a report of any typos or any of that kind of stuff. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I managed to get another ankle cast out. I'm pretty sure I'm probably past uh, the week that I said it was going to take, but I'm close, so that's that's pretty good, right? Um, I've got plans for some more ankle casts coming up. One of them is going to be, I don't know, like a, a video essay or something like that, kind of like uh, what Rish did. If any of you saw it, he did a video essay on his uh, on his blog where he took the blog post that he did about uh, character assassination Luke Skywalker and he did a video version of that, which I thought was pretty cool. And uh, when I was thinking about doing this podcast that I've got planned coming up here for the ankle cast, I decided that would probably be the best way to go about it. Uh, my, I mean, this one's going to be more of an essay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually write it and uh, probably read it off uh, so that it sticks more to the script <laughs> instead of just me rambling on and on and on and on. Because this thing is kind of really important to me. It's, it's, uh, it's got to do with uh, health and, and stuff like that. And I've had a bunch of issues with that kind of stuff in recent times. And recently I've learned a lot of stuff about health that I wish I had known years and years ago. And I only kind of stumbled upon it all by accident. Um, so I want to get the word out to tell people about it so that they don't have to be like me who finally hear about it 20 years from now and say, boy, I wish I knew about that stuff a long time ago. Um, Because, yeah, it's a a different paradigm uh, completely. So I'm going to do that one, but that probably won't be the next episode because that's uh, going to take some effort. Which, as I said, I I can't even manage to get my camera ordered. So, you know, effort is not my strong suit. Um... So yeah, uh, last show I, uh, I offhandedly mentioned uh, that uh, I would say something about my other tragedy that happened in New Orleans. Aside from just losing my GoPro-esque camera, um, I also lost $100 cash. Uh, how that happened... I'm not sure, but let me let me see if I can give you guys the rundown for it. So, we went to the French Quarter while we were in New Orleans, and uh, I thought that it would probably be wise to have some cash when we go there. So I figured there'd be a lot of, at the very least, we could give tips to the bands that were playing in the street. Um, But, you know, I figured there'd probably be people that, you know, were were selling stuff here and there or everywhere that would be uh, not able to accept cards. You know, people just selling, I don't know, art or food in the streets or something like that. So, you know, I brought 
I, I wanted to bring some money. So the night before we headed out there, I stopped by the uh, bank and I grabbed $100 from the ATM. Kind of wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd never thought of it. But anyways, that's what I did. And then I put it in my pocket the next morning and we went out to the car. And as we were getting in the car, everybody was all cold. And they said, oh, it's so windy and cold out here. Oh, I need my coat. And so everybody went back in and got, you know, coats and stuff like that. Or jackets, I guess, is really, they weren't coats. It's not like we were going out uh, to Denver or someplace like that. We were just going where it was kind of windy in New Orleans. So I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt at the time. And I thought, oh, maybe this might, you know, become... Uh, something that I regret if I don't change into some pants so I decided I'd change into some pants and I swear that what I did was take all the stuff out of my pockets my phone my uh, uh, keys the hundred dollars and I set them all there and I changed into pants and then I picked them all up and put them back in my pockets and went out to the car and then we headed to the French Quarter so we're walking along in the French Quarter and I realized at one point that there's nothing in my pocket where the money should be. I think I had my keys and my money in the same pocket, but it wasn't in there anymore. I had the keys still, but the money was gone. And I was freaking out. I mean, I, I probably should have put it in my wallet instead of just into my pocket <clears throat> funny thing was I was thinking I'm not gonna bring my wallet because it'll be safer to not have it because somebody might you know want to pickpocket my wallet um, and so I didn't bring that instead I just have a little uh, thing on my phone it's just got like a little pocket where you can keep like three or four cards in it so I had you know my my important card my driver's license and my bank card and stuff like that but it doesn't have room to put cash into, you know? So I couldn't put it in there. If I put cash into it, it'll stretch the, the pocket out so that it, uh, it won't, the cards won't stay in. So I didn't want to do that. So, um, so yeah, so I, I just had it in my pocket and I noticed that it wasn't there anymore. And I was f feeling around in all my pockets going, oh crap, is it, did I put it in the other pocket? Did I put it, and I was feeling even my back pockets and my side pockets and all this stuff, and it was just gone. And I asked my wife, I was hoping that maybe I had given it to her and just forgotten about doing that or something like that. But uh, apparently I didn't do that. I just plain lost it. It was gone from my pocket. I, my guess is what probably happened is I pulled my hand, I had my hand in my pocket, pulled it out, and money just kind of came out with it and fell on the ground and I didn't notice and uh, nobody around me said hey you just dropped a hundred dollars dude uh, so yeah it was gone um, my wife thinks that maybe it was a pickpocket that uh, got that money out of out of my pocket I suppose that's possible I mean the French Quarter of New Orleans is exactly the kind of place I would expect a pitch po pitch pocket, a pickpocket, to be um, operating because it's a good spot. Uh, it's usually busy, you know. People are always freaking totally blind ass blitzed off of their out of their minds, uh, etc. So. It could have been the way it goes. You, you know, I've seen some of those shows, like on, on like 2020 or whatever, where they have some guy give away the secrets of a pickpocket, where he, uh, you know, comes up and says something to somebody and like distracts them by touching them on one side, so they look over there while he steals stuff out of their other side pocket. I don't remember anything like that happening. So, you know, I, I think it's more likely I just lost it, but. Oh, I was so irritated. That money was gone. And uh, we had to stop and get money, more money out of just an ATM that was uh, 
right there in one of the shops in the French Quarter to get by with. And on top of that, another thing happened too, where uh, at the end of the night, um, I was, I've been using my camera, which is a DSLR camera, so it has like the, the options where you can go to manual settings or you can be in uh, auto, like full auto or, you know, certain different kinds of auto settings. I've been using the full auto just to make it easier. I didn't have to think about anything. Uh, you know, so I could concentrate on not losing the $100 in my pocket. Um, and at the end of the evening, as we were walking uh, back towards our car, I handed my one of my kids the camera because they wanted to take some pictures or, or whatever. And I think it was at this point where the camera, the, the dial where you switch between the modes got bumped. It got bumped out of auto and into manual. And I didn't know this. I didn't know this until I got home a day and a half later. Uh, the next day we went out to the swamp and went on the boat tour and we went uh, to a national park area called the Barataria Preserve and walked on a boardwalk trail through the swamp that they had there. Just some of the most beautiful stuff I've ever seen there. And I took over, I think probably close to 300 pictures while I was there. Not all of them were good. I, well, in fact, none of them were good because the switch had been switched to uh, manual. And so when I got home and I plugged it in and uh, went to look at my, can my pictures, I was so excited. I was like, oh, I can't wait to see these. They're gonna be so great. And I went to look at them and they were all horribly overexposed. Just blind, you know, blindingly white. And I was like, oh crap, all of my pictures are ruined. And truthfully, I was more upset about losing all these pictures than I was about losing my camera or losing $100. Uh, I guess, you know, th there's no way to go back and get them. There's no replacing them, you know? I can get another $100, I can buy another camera, but the pictures that I took, if they're ruined, they're gone. Uh, you know, I could, I guess I could go back uh, another time and take, do the same stuff and take more pictures, but they wouldn't be those pictures, they would just be pictures of a different trip to New Orleans, you know? It wouldn't, it, it, yeah, there's just no replacing them. Um, so I was really upset. Fortunately, uh, when I threw them into Photoshop and messed with them, uh, I was able to bring the exposure down and most of the pictures I was able to save. Uh, there's issues with all of them. I was hoping the little auto uh, color corrector kind of thing would help me out a lot more, but it didn't really do much. Um, so some of the colors I think are off. I tried to adjust them to make them look right. Um, and a lot of the color is missing, like on the pictures that I took just with my phone, you know, the sky is just super, super blue, but in all the ones that I took with my camera, the sky is kind of a washed out white color. Not like it was cloudy that day, but you know, that's what you get when you overexpose the crap out of your pictures, I guess. But all in all, it came out okay. So my pictures weren't totally ruined and I was, uh, I was able to be happy about it all. The funny thing is with all this stupid, dumb stuff, this bad stuff that happened, losing a camera, losing money, ruining pictures, all in all, I loved the trip. I had such a great time um, and we really enjoyed it. My wife wants to go back. She's even thinking like we need to go back sometime when it's Mardi Gras, which uh, I would have never, I would have never pegged her as somebody who would want to do that. Uh, she would be the person who would avoid it at all costs. Uh, the last thing she wants to do is uh, drop into a, you know, a swirling hub of debauchery. Um, 
but something about it got her interested. Uh, and she's talking on the drive home. She's talking, oh, maybe we need to go back when it's uh, Mardi Gras itself. So who knows, maybe I'll actually experience Mardi Gras in New Orleans someday. I think that would be really cool. I'd like that a lot, but we'll have to see if it actually happens. We'll see if that, that mindset wears off. I'm willing to bet it won't, though. I think, I think she really liked New Orleans, just like I did. Um, so there you go, ankle cast number, I believe it's number 39, but I really have no idea, uh, in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back again, hopefully within a week, to give you another, uh, another cast. Uh, I've got some ideas for some topics and stuff like that, and I'll, of course, have my uh, report on how things are going with the writing. We're writing right now in book two of the Sunny and Gray saga, the Sunny and Gray trilogy. Uh, first book's called Sunny, second book Gray, third book Sunny and Gray, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I think that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, so, you can look for that after my first reader gets their hands on it. Maybe I can get the first book put out. Uh, I'm afraid to do that, but I, I, I need to figure out how to do it and get on with it. It's not like there's any reason not to. Um, not like I'm going to make any money off of it, so, you know, I might as well get going with it and uh, just just enjoy it. Be, be a writer. Say I published a novel. That would be awesome, right? <clears throat> Anywho, uh, thanks for uh, watching slash listening to the show, everybody. Uh, I'm going to let you go now. Uh, I just got to say, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Do it! Do it! You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. Don't let your dreams be dreams. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're gonna do today. Just do it! Do it! And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarters percent guaranteed. That's all it takes to be successful is an attitude. It's an awesome feeling when you truly believe that you're going to be successful. Nothing is impossible! Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye! Yeah.